Hello and welcome to a product profile for the Durafly Das Ugly Stick. Now I've got here to my right uh, a box version, this is how you'll receive it. And here of course uh, is the artwork box. Now the idea of the product profile is just to talk you through the uh, assembly of the model and some of the features and then we'll pass over to the guys in New York and they will take the ugly stick for a spin. Now, what we think we've done, so convincing is the uh, nitro engine on the front. I don't think many of you realize that this is in fact fake. Uh, we'll get to that in just a minute when we open the box. So, box is open. The first thing you will see when you open up the lid is this very well packaged wing. Take the wing out. Now, there is, this is taped down, so you'll need to just cut that free like uh, so. Now, oh, another bit of tape there, one second. Okay, now, you will see, uh, as you'd expect, it has two Adon servos, they're pre-installed. Very, very nice vinyl type decals pre-applied and it's got a spa. This wing has a spa running all the way through it. So it's, I just do this, it's very stiff for what it is, which is great because when you come to flying, as you'll see later, it can really take a bit of, a bit of beating and punishment in those higher G maneuvers. Now going through the rest of the box, uh, it's all nicely wrapped in plastic too. You'll also see in the box a uh, very nice full color instruction manual. There is really not much to this model at all uh, in terms of assembly. You can see as you go through the model, you've got the parts all laid out. Uh, you've also got the recommended items for this. Uh, it will need a six channel radio, uh, a 2200 uh, free S LiPo, and a five or six channel receiver, all listed here. We keep going through. You can see it's very nicely illustrated to the assembly process. And I say assembly because uh, it really does go together very quickly indeed. It's just a case of screwing a few things together as we will show you now. Quickly going through the rest of the box, if I take the fuselage out here, again, just need to cut away some of the packing material. All beautifully wrapped in foam and plastic, which is just what you want. We'll take out the fuselage first of all, because that's the most critical, critical point of interest. Now, typical stick fuselage, as you see, ugly stick fuselage, great. Now, what you're used to seeing on um, all the ARFs and uh, other models before, the uh, Durafly ugly stick, is a nitro engine stuck on the front. And to look at it, you think, well, okay, they've stuck a nitro engine on the front of a foamy. Well, we haven't, because in fact, if you look close, let me get it in there, this is actually a plastic, uh, fully molded engine. And it does work. It doesn't work as a nitro engine, of course. It works as an electric motor. Now, if you can see that in there, that is the uh, outrunner that's supplied with the uh, ugly stick from Durafly. Uh, through the, I think I'll probably show you best here, through the firewall and through the back of the crankcase goes a um, extension shaft. It's a hardened extension shaft that runs from the motor shaft all the way through the crankcase and it's supported in the uh, in the real life or what would be the real life uh, bearing support of a nitro engine. There is actually in our plastic version a high speed bearing as well. Now that supports the shaft completely and enables you to use the electric motor through this dummy nitro engine and that is the real crux of the ugly stick because it's unbelievable when you see this motor up close, you really do think that it's an authentic nitro engine. We've, we've uh, even included the uh, silicon fuel tubing for you. If you look on the side, it says it's a Durafly branded motor. It even has a .25. Now, it comes out of the box, as you saw, all pre-installed like this, so there's really nothing to do in that respect. Now, if we look under the uh, pre-hinged hood, we get a look at the more traditional electronics in the, uh, oh, there you go, that's the magnet hatch, in the ugly stick. There is our uh, brushless outrunner pre-installed, and I think you can just see in there, this is the 30 amp Durafly speed controller that again is pre-installed. Now, after that, it's uh, in the box, we just have the horizontal towel. Sorry for the noise. Horizontal towel, that just screws on, which we'll come to in a minute. And, now down my tape, 
the vertical tower. Other than that, there are a few accessories. We have the uh, Durafly 10x6 wooden prop. Again, very authentic looking, but performs flawlessly as an electric motor and model setup. And one more final bit. A little tape on my arm. The undercarriage, again, that just screws on. So we'll go through that very quickly now, that very short assembly process, and then we'll pass over to see some flying. Okay, so that is the box uh, contents laid out. Uh, one thing I do want to draw your attention to are the um, accessories that come uh, all pre-bagged. Notice how each individual one is labeled accordingly. If you look in the manual, you'll see that uh, the manual refers directly to the labeled bags as well. So it couldn't be simpler to get this thing together in just a matter of minutes. Now, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is actually uh, apply, or sorry, install all of the control horns. You'll see the typical Durafly control horns that you see there. They'll need uh, screwing onto the ailerons and onto the an elevator surface as well as the rudder. That's just a few minutes job. Now, one thing that I will advise you to do, and it does say to do in the manual as well, with these surfaces, um, you really want to loosen them up before you install them and connect them to the uh, servos, the pre-installed servos. So take your surface and just quickly just move it back and forth like this, just gently, just to loosen that surface up. By doing so, you reduce the amount of strain on the servo and you better increase your control authority of the model when it's up in the air. Uh, the rudder, do a little bit for the rudder. It doesn't need it as much, but the ailerons and the elevators definitely do. So again, spread your hand out as much as you can and just flex that surface just to free it up there. You can hear the tape just loosening up a bit in the hinge line. That's good, we'll do it for this one as well. Just loosens them off nicely. And then with the control surfaces loosened and the control horns on, the next thing to do is just to bolt it together. Now you start with the towel. The first thing to do once you've got the control horn on is to put the uh, vertical stabilizer. It is a tight fit. That's good, that's exactly what you want. Push that in until you can't get it to go down any further. And what you'll notice when you turn it around, you see the, uh, the plastic um, uh, guides, if you like. These actually accept the bolts that bolt up through the elevator or the horizontal towel. So you'll just want to push them through until they come out of the other side, of the bottom side of the fuselage. And you'll know when you're all the way through because there should be no gap here with the uh, vertical towel joining to the uh, rear of the fuselage. At that point, all you do is push it over. This is the bottom side. You can tell because of the mold marks for the carbon. All you do is push that over. Can you see that there? There you go. Push that over, push that on. And now that is keyed in place by the plastic. So all you'll need to do now is with the provided towel plane bolts, just screw that on. Now to bolt on the towel, you'll need the uh, 3M by 15 millimeter bolts. Two of which, that's them. They just simply slotting there. And here. Just screw that down. Now what you'll want to do when you uh, almost finish screwing the towel plane on, you want to make sure that the screw goes all the way down. They should be below the bottom surface of the plastic here. If they're not, then you know that you need to screw them in just a little bit more. It does get a little tight towards the end, but believe me, you'll know when you hit the end because you really cannot turn it any further. There you go. And now the final one here at the front. There we go. Now, the benefit of this, and it means not only um, does it assemble very, very quickly, but if for whatever reason you happen to damage any part of the plane, it is, of course, easily removable and easily replaced with the spare parts available from our website. Now, in this bag, you get the uh, towel plane, and there are two self-tapping screws. Put them aside for later, because they are for screwing on the undercarriage. So put them aside and don't lose them. Now, also included in the uh, bag of accessories is, if I can take it out, everyone's favorite, an Allen key. The reason being, I turn it over here, can we all see that? You've got um, the towel wheel mechanism, which is directly installed into the rudder. Now, what you're gonna need to do with this, you can see it's got the flap filed into it there. 
there's a hole at the bottom of the fuselage. If you just insert that up, now there is a little bit of paint in there, so it's a little bit tight. You insert that up, but what it will actually end up doing is coming through into this uh, collet, if you like, here. Push it all the way up, make sure that you actually unscrew this grub screw just a little, just so that uh, tail wheel shaft can go up. Push that in until it goes all the way in. Now you'll want to align it with the actual rudder itself, which is about there. And using the key that's supplied, bring that down. Just uh, tighten that up. And now, you've got a steerable tail wheel linked directly to the rudder. Now, of course, the only thing to do, if you haven't already done it, as I did suggest, and as the manual does suggest, is to now install the uh, control rods, uh, sorry, the control horns. But as I said, it is easy to do at the beginning of this process. So let's now move on to the front. Okay, now the uh, next step is the undercarriage. If you look at the undercarriage, you will notice that it does have a particular direction. The undercarriage should rake forward ever so slightly. So if you take a look, you can see that this uh, trailing edge of the undercarriage uh, sweeps forward. That is the front, so what you want to do is make sure you get the orientation correct. So I know that's the right way now. Those two self-tapping screws that I mentioned, you will need them now. Align it like so. Actually, you know what the easiest thing to do is just put a little bit of the screw in first, just so it keys into the undercarriage. Like so. Now you can put it back down on the mounting plate. It will align to those holes nicely and just screw it down. And then of course the last thing to do on the fuselage is to just install the propeller, the 10x6 uh, wooden Durafly propeller, but we'll come back to that in just a minute. So I'm gonna move on to the wing now. Now, supplied in the accessory bag uh, is a wire lead. Obviously you just simply plug that into the ailerons and you put the wings on, feeding the wires into the fuselage here. Uh, also supplied, make sure your wires are into the fuselage, like so. Also supplied are wing bolts, four of them. Make sure you use the longer ones at the front and the short ones at the back. Again, that is mentioned in the comprehensive manual, but often people just skim by that. That is important because the wing is thicker at the front than it is at the rear, so you need the longer bolts at the front. They're only ever so slightly longer, but they are longer, so look out for that when you put the wing on. Now, of course, I'm getting ahead of myself, so keen am I to get this thing together and show you guys uh, that I neglected to tell you the control push rods for the ailerons. Again, once you've got the control horns on, you just install the control rods on each aileron servo. What you will need to do first, either by plugging into your receiver beforehand or by using a, got one here, servo tester. You'll want to just bring those ailerons out in a neutral position. I'll show you now. You'll want to just either with a receiver, as I said, or a servo tester, get those ailerons out and get them as neutral as you can. There it is working. So just hit the neutral button and that is the aileron servo out, ready for you to install your push rod and control horn. That's something you'll probably want to do before you go ahead and install the wing because it's just that much easier with the wing in hand before it goes on the model. Now one final thing I will show you before we put the wing on and uh, this model is ready to fly is actually the battery access and how you will install the receiver. So if I lift up this hatch here, again, magnetically held, very nice quality and very secure as well. You've got ample space inside the fuselage. We recommend a six channel receiver. That's all you need for this model. Uh, the receiver itself would go in this area just here once you've got everything plugged in. And the battery just slides all the way forward as far as you can get it, 2200 Frias. And then in between those, just recommend a piece of soft foam just to hold the battery in place. The hatch then goes back on and you are essentially ready to go. So let's get the wing on and let's have a final look at this model before we pass it over to the guys in New York for flying. So here we are, we are assembled and we're pretty much ready to go. And I wanna just touch on the magical part of the uh, Dust Ugly Stick from Durafly 
and it is again this fake engine. It's uh, armed now, so I'll be careful, but I just want to show you how well this uh, electric fake nitro motor works. You ready for this? Here we go. Engine hasn't stalled, that's not a dead stick, that's just purely the throttle of the electric motor inside. Now, very carefully, just to show you guys that uh, we are not cheating you, and this is in fact a fully working nitro electric motor, we're gonna open the hatch and try and run the props so you can see the uh, motor turning. Our other cameraman has come around the side here. You can see that motor now? All right, so. There it is, it is working, this is no lie, it is the world's first nitroelectric motor. It is a great feature of the model and um, it's really what sets it apart from any other ugly stick on the market once you understand truly what it is. So without further ado, I'm going to hand you over to the guys in New York so you can see this model flying. It is the Durafly Dust Ugly Stick, uh, it is 1100mm and it's available in plug and fly format and from hobbyking.com, so guys, over to you. Stuart, guys, we are out here in a field to help Stuart with this here product profile. I've got Max here, he's one of our customer service guys and product specialists from upstairs. Super good dude, good pilot, and we have an ugly stick. Now Stuart was kind enough to send us a list of maneuvers that he wants. I've got it here in email. We're gonna put this thing in the sky and Max and I will take it through its paces. Check it out. One thing you can do with a two-stoke ugly stick, go. She's off. Well, that was awesome. So takeoff, clearly not an issue. Give me a couple of good rolls. So guys, that's a basic roll. Any sport plane ought to be able to do a basic roll. Let's step that up a very tiny notch. Let's see a couple of good loops. Pull back Just on the elevator, she'll do easy, it. Easy, easy plane. Which yeah. is pretty much what you want. This is, you know, it's not a trainer, it's a sport plane. Um, I think it's trainer easy, oh, yeah. but it's not trainer limited. So it's really kind of perfect if you want something to fly and fly well that isn't gonna break the bank or your spirit if you hit the earth. It's foam, it goes back together well. That little plastic motor just gives it some kind of zing, something special not every plane's gonna have. Five extra horsepower. Five extra horsepower. That's the red. Ah, oh, right. Red makes it totally faster. What's next on the list? All right, Stewie's list. Do you want us to fly upside down at what all? What Stuart wants, Stuart gets. You are reading Stuart's mind. The next thing is inverted passes. All right. Let's see how she does upside down. What Stuart would like next is some touch and goes and some stall turns. Let's use stall turns. Because I don't want you to land yet. I'm sure you don't want to land yet. I'm going to run this Let's do a battery. few stall turns. Ugly skate. I mean stick. I mean skate. Back on the other side. Epic half-pipe action with your trainer plane. Let's get a couple more of those in because it's red. Half-pipe in it. Sick. That looks cool as hell. All right. Touch and goes. So that's enough freestyling and other cool stuff, Max. Bring here for a nice clean landing. You got it. It floats right in, just set the power back, hold a little elevator. Look at that thing. Look at that thing. Guys, that is the ins and outs of the Durafly Das Ugly Stick. Get them while you can, guys. They're going really fast. Thanks, Stuart. Max for the flying. See you guys next time.